Hey guys, today I'm here for my very first monthly wrap-up of 2016, which of course means that we're going to be talking about what I read in January. And I'm a little concerned this might be a rather uneventful wrap-up because most of the reading I did, I did for the Bout of Books 15 readathon, and I've actually already wrapped that up. So for Bout of Books 15, I was trying to read the entirety of the Chronicles of Narnia, and I only managed to get through the first four, which of course were The Magician's Nephew, The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, the horse and his boy, and Prince Caspian. Now because I did wrap these up already, I'm not going to go super in detail um, with each of them, but I will say that I really enjoyed getting back into the world of Narnia. It was like visiting old friends in a way, um, and the only one I wasn't really blown away by was the horse and his boy, but again if you want to see my full thoughts and my reasons why I didn't really like this one, go check out my Bout of Books review or wrap up. I will link that in the description. After Bout of Books was over, my initial plans were to just finish off the Chronicles of Narnia in January, but I kind of burned out on them, so instead I picked up a couple of nonfiction books. The first nonfiction book I picked up in January was this beautiful edition of Japanese Woodblock Print Workshop by April Vollmer. Now I received this as part of the Blogging for Books program put together by Crown Publishing, which is an imprint of Penguin Random House. I'm in no way sponsored or paid to promote this program or this book, but I will link their website below in case you're interested in finding out more. Unfortunately, they're not open to booktubers, really. You have to have an active book blog to receive review copies, but I will put the link down below just the same in case you want to check them out because they have some really interesting books and a lot of really beautiful art books kind of like this one. This is part uh, cultural history, part practical guide to practicing the traditional Japanese art of mokuhanga or woodblock printing. April Vollmer is a contemporary printmaker and artist who has put this together in collaboration with a Japanese university in hopes of drawing more foreign artists' attention to this traditional art. In this book there are some really beautiful um, historical traditional prints as well as some more modern um, examples of how contemporary artists are using this traditional art um, in a new modern way. I have a full written review of this on my blog, so of course that will be linked in the description, but basically what I said is that this is kind of every art history majors or art history lovers dream. It starts off with an, a look at the history of Japanese printmaking um, and kind of a look at the evolution of different printing styles and techniques, but then the majority of it is actually a very um, detailed practical guide to actually making mokuhanga prints. So she goes into um, tools and materials and then she also gives just really detailed kind of step-by-step -step, um, guides. So ultimately I think this is kind of the perfect book for um, artists looking for a practical guide to mokuhanga printing but also for art enthusiasts or Japanese history and culture enthusiasts. I think all of you would really like this and basically if I had my own coffee table this beautiful thing would be sitting right on it. The other nonfiction book I picked up in January was also of a Japanese theme and that was The Life-Changing Magic of Tidying Up by Marie Kondo. Now that I have read this I can definitely see how this is not some people's cup of tea, specifically when uh, Marie Kondo starts to anthropomorphize the possessions she's talking about. She does. She has a lot of passages where she talks about how you have to let your clothes rest in between wearing them, how you need to let each item speak to you um, so that you know whether or not you want to keep it, and I, I can definitely see how that would be too airy-fairy for some people. However, that actually kind of worked for me, and I think that's mainly because what I took away from this book or the overall message of this book for me was that we need to look at the space that we live in as well as all of our possessions as extensions of ourselves. So when we are talking to a shirt or to a book or to a sock, um, we're actually asking, are you really a part of me that I need to keep hanging on to? I don't know if you can tell behind me, but since the last time I filmed a video, I have actually reorganized my shelves and gone through all of my books, partially using her method of picking up each object and asking it if it sparks joy in me, and I was able to get rid of quite a few books, so while I don't know if I will go to all of the extremes she mentions in this book, um, I have been able to find it actually practical and useful in my own life. That's what I managed to read in its entirety in January. I am in the middle of a few things. Um, first of all, I picked up 
book five in the Chronicles of Narnia, The Voyage of the Dawn Treader at the end of Battle Books. And like I said, I will get back to this at some point, but right now I'm a little burned out. And then I am still in the middle of Anna Karenina by Leo Tolstoy. Um, this is, of course, my January Back to University book. And as of right now, while I'm filming this, I am on page... 243 of 817. This is kind of the reason I assigned this as my January read for the project um, because I knew I was going to kind of drag out reading it. I am happy to report that I am enjoying it more this time around um, but it's not really something I find myself wanting to pick up. Once I start reading I get sucked in and I read more than I intended to but it's just it's not a book that I like find myself rushing to pick up. So hopefully I will finish this in the next week or so, but I'm happy to report that I am enjoying it more so far. So this is what I managed to read in January as well as what I am currently reading, and I'm happy to report that I enjoyed most of it, and I'm actually ahead on my Goodreads reading challenge for once, which never happens. I'm officially one book ahead. I read five out of 50 books, and I'm feeling optimistic about my reading this year. I've had a good one so far. So hopefully you guys had a good reading month in January as well. If you have read any of these and would like to share your thoughts with me, please feel free to do so. But otherwise, I hope you all are having a fantastic day. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you very soon in another video. Bye!